Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Let's like wait for people to come in while I quickly set up here and make sure everything is all good. Um, I'm going to start off this podcast a little bit different from usual. First of all, I'm going to make sure my mic mode is voice isolation. There we go, that should be a lot better, hopefully. Um, but yeah, guys, so if you, do, if you don't know, and if you just, you're just quickly coming into this, uh, me and my wife have our own show called Tales of under the big top we started it maybe i don't know three or four months ago now and it's just a bit of fun just a bit of a a me and my wife having a conversation about all things conspiracy and all things out there and wacky and wild going on in the world and yeah it's it's a fun back and forth we enjoy doing it and we decided to start like a bit of a, a bit of a new series or a bit of a new a new style shall we say and I'll bring this up while we're talking. There we go. This is the latest thumbnail. Uh, we started to try a new star where my, my wife reacts to me trying to explain to her all the convoluted theories surrounding any given conspiracy topic. So the, just just a few days ago, me and her discussed about the end of the world, and I tried to explain to her all the numerous versions of the end of the world that I've discovered um, over my decade Um time researching all of these topics and all of these things now my, my wife is a quite an anti-authoritarian um free-thinking type you know i would definitely say she's certainly a truther of sorts um but she certainly hasn't been diving into conspiracy theories like i have for so long you know so um much of what i discuss is new to her and she's very open to it, very, very uh, interested in listening. And this is what the episodes are kind of going to be about. And um, we'll pick a topic and I'm going to try my best to lay out for her everything I know about that given topic and what the theories are. And we'll just gauge her reactions and her natural questions to, to hearing such things. So what I'm going to do to open this up, I'm just going to play for you guys uh, maybe the first five to ten minutes of that show. It is currently premiering right now live on Tales Under the Big Chop YouTube channel. And you can go find the link in the description to this video to go straight to that vid to that channel um, and that video and watch that and subscribe um, if you're interested. But for now, guys, yeah, I'm just going to play for you the first five to ten minutes of that. And then we'll crack on with my show and we'll get on with discussing whatever you guys want to talk about. I'm hoping I can get some call-ins today. Maybe we, while we're waiting, I can get you guys to uh, share your interest in being a call-in guest today. Um, you won't need your phone necessarily. If you have a laptop, you can do it too. It will all be online probably through zoom um, or maybe even skype we'll see which one's easier but yeah guys i'm going to play this a little bit for you now Um, i'm going to switch over here so we can play my my audio i'm going to turn my mic off and yeah just enjoy the first five to ten minutes snippet here of of what me and my wife get up to on a wednesday afternoon (laughs) we're just free from our from our toddler for a little bit while he's over at nana's house you know and we get to just have a bit of a discussion about all things conspiracy so i hope you guys enjoy this Welcome to another episode of Tales Under the Big Top. So today I'm going to ask my wife some questions and give her, pose some scenarios to her about how the world could end and what candidates we currently have available to us and possibilities of how we could all go down. Because this is something we've been been thinking about for a while. And of course, most of my Christian listeners out there will probably say, well, we know how it's going to end because of what the Bible says. But, uh, you know, I I think there may be room for interpretation a little bit. Just a little bit, because we don't know the specific details. What we do know, and we were just discussing this before we started, that there's going to be some huge, all-encompassing, every single person in existence involved with type of war. And And those people are going to surround the camp of saints, whatever that is, and go to war with it. And then it's the end. Fire comes down. Everything gets destroyed. Hang on. Are you making fire comes down a thing? Or... No, no, this is what it says in Revelation. It says at the end, they'll, and they'll march up the broad plain of the earth and make war with the camp of saints, at which point God will just rain fire down and destroy everyone and everything. And then it's the final great white throne judgment in heaven. Everybody just is before the throne in heaven. Everyone who's ever existed ever. And then it's the final, the heaven and earth, the physical realm gets destroyed. 
along with all the evil entities who made it bad, like the devil and things like that. You know, they all get destroyed in the lake. I think of fire. the problem with this podcast. And then there's a new heaven and earth, and everyone gets to repopulate that again. I think the problem with this podcast is going to be that I can't take certain things seriously because you said it's going to rain down fire and all I'm pitching is like a fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> you know what's like, funny, actually? You just reminded me. There was a film that came out in like 2008 called Rain of Fire, which is about dragons being discovered under London <laughs> and suddenly coming out on Earth and taking over everything and destroying you know everything. What? Do you know what I'm getting tired of? I'm getting tired of suggesting things and you being like, do you know what? I've actually seen this thing or I've heard this thing. Why don't I have unique thoughts? This isn't fair. It's a film. I used to love that film, Rain of Fire. I, I, I used to paint and draw the front cover again and it, 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 it encapsulated my, my, my young mind. I'm not going to lie. And it was about... People mining under London, you know, like typical miners, but like in like, I think it was in like the 90s or 2000s or something. Miners. But like more modern. And, and anyway, they, they they hit something and it was a dragon. <laughs> the dragon was pissed off, came out, and then next thing you know, the whole, it's like 20 years later, the whole earth has just been completely destroyed and everyone's living underground in fear of dragons. That's what it is. It's called Reign of Fire. So when you said, I just imagined a dragon, I thought, you know what? <laughs> Maybe that was predictive programming all along. They were telling us this, you know. Yeah, who knows? But anyway, that's the biblical scenario. That's the end, end of the world. Okay. So that's hold on, world. wait a minute. Am I on Earth while he's raining down this fire? I don't know. You might be dead by that point before this war happens. All right, all right. If, <laughs> let's, let's say it was going to happen, like, today. Mm. Is he just going to rain that fire down on me while I'm still on Earth, minding my own little business? I have no idea. It depends if you went to go Are make You're going to burn me to death. Well, I, to be specific, I may be embellishing by saying the whole Earth gets burned. I think anybody who goes to march against the Camp of Saints and surrounds it, they all get burnt up. Oh, so this is like a nuke that is aiming for one specific... I think it's literally just a ring of fire comes down and destroys the ring of people who've surrounded the camp. <laughs> <laughs> right, but he's still going to burn these people <laughs> who have made war with Jesus, literally, in a very literal sense, yes. There may be smatterings of people all around the earth who didn't make the march and didn't go to make war with him. You know when you make those little charts where there's two circles and they, like, overlap in the middle? Oh, what are they called? Oh, a Venn diagram. Yeah, right. Yeah, so cool. now I'm picturing, like, there's the ring of fire over here and mm. then there's the people that aren't fighting or aren't making war or whatever, however you've raised it. I'm smack bang in the middle, what happens to me? I'm in that little overlappy little fraction then. What? Do up? I just get caught up with the ring of fire because I'm not on this side? Well, I think those who made war with the Camp of Saints will get burnt with fire physically. And then what we're told is it's Great White Throne Judgment. So I think all this would fade away and your consciousness would suddenly appear in heaven. And you wouldn't have a physical flesh body anymore. You'd be in the in front. So they die. Yeah. But I'd be thrown in front of a judgment. I think transmuted is the word. You would no longer be in your physical body. You would just probably just oh, blink and you're in front of the so throne. So the good place. The throne of God. You're in front of the throne of God, ready for the final judgment at the end of time. No, I meant the good places in the TV show. Yeah. Kind of like, she wakes yeah. up dead. As well as just like the good place on that. She wakes up dead. <laughs> and then she's at this like judgmenty place. Like. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think you'll be in like a human body. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not been to heaven. I, don't I know. hope if I am in a human body, I'm, I'm skinny enough. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be nice. Yeah, the perfected body. But uh, there's there's a lot of debate in theology about what happens then because there's it says the heaven and earth and the the false prophet and the beast and Satan gets thrown into the lake of fire and destroyed with the earth. All the demons. No, the the. Oh, wait, I need to understand here. So the ring of fire thing. So when you say all oh, them lot are gonna get burnt, does that mean the dead? Gone. They're not going to the judgment. They've no, no, they, no. They get burnt like, and they go to judgment. Oh, they also go to judgment. It's just this is just physical stuff. So, yeah. so then it doesn't really matter then. Everybody ends up there in the end. So it doesn't matter whether I because right. So I could be. I could be on that side getting burnt down, but then I'm still gonna get judged in a different spot. Yeah, maybe your judgment would be slightly harsh if you were the one of the ones that went to go make war with the Camp of Saints, though. You know what I mean? Depends what I was uh, making war for. And mostly, mo and, and that's this is the idea as well. You could be covered if you did it ignorantly. So, uh, so this is, again, there's so much debate here about what how this works. This is why. But say you are a Christian and you were tricked 
Okay, because like I explained to you earlier, so that how could they pull this off? Let's talk about this end of the world, this particular. Oh, wait, 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 one second. The whole I could be tricked thing. There's going to be loads of people up there going, "Oh, but I was tricked when they weren't." Yeah. Well, I think God has mercy and grace and forgiveness, and through His Son, you can get forgiveness and cover for your sins. So maybe there might be people who get burnt there who are still okay because they were fooled, and obviously they have Jesus to cover. Yeah, but I'm saying, what if they're trying to fool Jesus? What if they're saying, yeah, but yeah, but I was tricked though. <laughs> well, you can't lie to an old knowing omniscient being. He knows everything. Know. <laughs> That's the difference. So you won't, it wouldn't try and find out. There'd be humans out there probably think they could. This is what I mean. But they can't. That's, that's what I'm suggesting. That's, that's called hubris. That's called mm -hmm. foolishness, pride. But uh, any, anyway, in this particular scenario, I think they could convince everybody to do this. Because look, this is the whole earth marches up. You think they could convince everyone to fight the camp of saints? The camp of saints. But they wouldn't know they were doing it. Which is what we don't want to do. We don't want to do that. So, so people who are waiting for the end of the world in that sense, uh, these these people uh, who are in my conspiracy world, for example. Hang on, no, sorry, I'm sorry for interrupting again, but you're saying you could convince everyone to do it, and I'm just sat here thinking there is no way in hell anyone could convince me to do anything I didn't want to do, so how are they going to do that? Well, this is the question. How are they going to convince so everybody to agree to come together as one unit and make war with one specific thing? And perhaps aliens. If we believe we are under attack by an enormous mothership that's come to destroy the earth, perhaps all the humanity would drop their differences and come together as one and go march up to go make war with it for the sake of the humanity's future. Now, if you if, if they sold that, now that's the plot of every movie ever. No, but you've kind of, right, we've kind of already had this conversation with the alien thing. Yeah. The way you just did it, I still was not expecting you to say aliens. You were like, aliens. perhaps aliens that was not what i was expecting and i've already heard you say it so i don't know why not well i'm, I'm, I'm like that crazy meme that guys like aliens from history channel like it'll be a case of like so say they're trying to get us all to fight this camp of saints and they need everybody to go do it and then there's little old people like me like get stuffed i ain't doing anything you tell me to do won't they just get all these people that they've already convinced to turn on me get rid of me and that would be way easier than what you're suggesting Possibly they might kill all the traitors who refuse to fight for Wouldn't that be easier, more efficient? Well, not everybody would. Most people would agree. Let's go fight the aliens. Yes, and then there would be little outliers like <laughs> And then, like, the, the, maybe the 2 to 3% of people are like, nah, lad, that's definitely fucking demons. <laughs> like, those people. I'm not even, do you know what? I'm not even saying I would be thinking that's demons. Even if I wasn't thinking it's demons, I'm still going to be sat there like, no, I ain't doing anything. It's like how they were recently trying to get us all, well, they were trying to say that they were going to bring back the whole drafting thing yeah. of sending people to war. And I'm like, mate, you ain't going to manage that with anybody. Nobody's going to Especially do not the British while we're talking about well, it. No, no, we don't do anything we don't want to do. No, no one's going to agree to a draft or a war they don't care about. But if humanity was at threat because of aliens... Maybe people would be more like, I have to do it for my children's future so they have a planet to live on, you know? Because I'm just like... Nah, let it burn. <laughs> I'm just jaded, I'm just like, because... I really am. I'm not the person to be sat here doing this because I'm so jaded that I'm just sat here thinking, yeah, but I'm going to die anyway. Mm. What's it matter whether it's now or in, like, 30 years' time? It's coming. <laughs> well, and I can't predict whether it's tomorrow. So if you're telling me that you might like, listen, if you don't go fight for this, you might die tomorrow. What you're telling me is I might die tomorrow, just because, or I might die tomorrow because you think we're gonna do, go do this fight. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. Look, I agree. You're never gonna get convinced to do anything any authority ever tells you to do. Ever, right? We get that. The audience gets that. Okay, <laughs> right. But let's talk about the point of the end of the world here. In this scenario, think about this. Jesus, as I told you, the revelation comes to bring an end to the world to create a new heaven and earth. So the heaven and earth, no, earth is going to get thrown into the lake of fire. So technically, Jesus comes to destroy the earth. They would tell us aliens have come to destroy the earth. And most of humanity would be like, let's fight back against the aliens because all the programming has taught them. Independence Day started all this, you know, yeah, war of the world. So like, Everyone people, would. People believe in aliens. Well, people have been programmed with the whole space stuff. NASA, millions and billions of planets. Alien invasion films have been ramping up for at least like 100 years now. Everyone's primed and ready for aliens to turn up. So when they do turn up... Well, maybe not you, because you don't watch those type of things. <laughs> most that's people, true, maybe that's my problem. I most people are prepped for aliens. Like, and, and 
for a long time, Christians have been like, no, the demons, the fallen angels, they've always been here. They're going to pretend to be aliens and pretend to be our saviors. But I'm starting to think, no, no, no. Maybe when the big old mothership just appears in the sky, this giant ass pyramid, what if that's Jesus and the camp of saints? Why is it a pyramid? Oh, well, some people think it might be a giant cube. I'm just saying, whatever, it could be any. <laughs> what is the, hang on, What I'm confused now. What the heck is this giant pyramid? What do you mean by... The New yeah. Jerusalem, which is what, where his city would be, his floating city, as it's described in, in oh, the book. The they, they gave the dimensions of it. And and people say it's equal length on all sides, so people said it must be a cube. But it's like 106, it's like 1,600 miles wide and length. It's a huge ass thing. Right, <laughs> but sweet people have assumed it's a cube. But I recently talked with Alpha Talks, and he says he's researching it, and people think it might actually be a pyramid. A pyramid works too with the descriptions, and that might be why the Illuminati always have the pyramid everywhere. They try to hijack the symbol of God and make it their own. The floating pyramid on top of the one dollar bill with the eye, the all-seeing eye of God on the pyramid. It's actually a reference to Jesus. <laughs> you mentioned that. What? That we put that symbol in the uh, ring box on the last thing there. <laughs> no one's seen it. No one's seen it. <laughs> Just yeah. reminded me. Yeah, if, if you don't know, in our last episode, uh, I married a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. If you look closely at the ring box, we've put the Illuminati eye just in the side of there. I thought hidden. for sure <laughs> somebody would see that. Nobody saw it. Nobody's Nobody seen it. it Guys. Subliminal need to open your eyes a little bit more. <laughs> Subliminal masters here. <laughs> like... Anyway, yeah, so when the big old... New Jerusalem, mothership, giant city in the sky appears. Most people are primed and ready to think aliens have invaded. Do you get what I mean? That's what people are waiting for. They're on edge for. But we've all been tricked then to get together as one and go fight the evil invading aliens who have come to destroy the earth. That's the confidence. <laughs> I think we can go fight them. Well, that's the, that, that's the trick of the devil. He's just convinced the whole earth to go and fight against their only saviour. And they all get burnt up and stuff. Just for reference, I'm currently picturing this floating city above a Curry's. A Curry's, <laughs> yeah. We're we're looking at like a we're all like a business park, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of shops in front yeah. of us. We've got a carpet I'm the place. We, we've got a pets at home. We've got a carpet place. We've got a next a clothes shop. We've got a furniture village, a Boots, and a Curry's. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, I'm, I'm right trying now, to picture and it's floating above. Mind you, how long did you just say it was? One thousand six hundred miles. One thousand six hundred squared. Miles. <laughs> squared. <laughs> you wouldn't even be able to see the end of it. It would just span the entire, yeah. Imagine if that just happened. Now what are you doing? Are you driving off or what? Well, I have, after what I've just said, I'm thinking, oh, well, it's clearly the end. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Better not make war with that thing. <laughs> it's what I'm saying. I think they could trick us. I think that, I'd so, be telling you to drive to go get my son right now. Yeah, we get, we get our family together and wait it out. And it would, could there become a point where then the nations would say, we need... Every able-bodied man, woman, and child to fight. <laughs> this is me being very ignorant, though. But how many, like, how... 1,600 miles, like, above the UK? Yeah. What's that looking like? That, well, we're, we're not even that long. Well, this is what I'm saying. So, like, at what? It's about... It's, it's, bigger, it's bigger than the UK in total. Right, now, this is my problem, right? So, 1,600 miles does not equate to the full Earth, right? No. Right. So, what? Who? Who's getting targeted first, lads? Well, because if that doesn't fit on the, top of the entire the, the entirety of the Earth, but from the theories I've seen, it's not going to go attack anything. If it is Jesus, it's just going to become visible. Okay, I don't mean I don't mean attack. I mean. If it's going to become visible, shouldn't it have been big enough to span Earth? Well, you're Because assuming, who's missing out here? You're assuming Earth is a sphere and that we wouldn't have... I'm not. <laughs> I'm not assuming Earth is a sphere. I'm picturing it as flat right now. If it now. is a flat... Let's, let's just say, for, for, for this theory's sake, it's the biblical cosmological version where everybody, no matter where you're on Earth, will be able to see it by looking north. But that's not 1,600 miles, surely. It would be big enough... Okay, in this. Like, what is 1,600 miles, then? Because... It's it's that huge. does not seem like it seems big, but it doesn't seem Earth big. Unless is that Earth is smaller than we've been told. So it says here in uh, twenty one sixteen of I think that's Revelation. The angel measures the city, and it says it is twelve thousand stadia by twelve thousand stadia, and twelve thousand stadia high. Okay, 
A stadion is usually stated as 185 metres or 607 feet. So the base has a dimension of about, sorry, 1,380 miles or 2,220 kilometres. I just want to tell you I heard not of that. So yeah, no, it's, it's 1,380 miles by 1,380 miles at the base. 1,380 by 1,380. How many miles around the Earth is 24,900? Yeah. They're assuming that's around. It's a decent chunk. The de distance from one side to the other through Earth's centre is 7,926. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's kind of like Earth being flat is about 8,000 mm -hmm. rounded up. 1,600 ain't that big then. Well, I don't know. It's about 20. It's about shy of 20%. Yeah, but what I'm saying is so then it wouldn't appear to everybody. But if it was high enough... Am I missing something? If it was high enough to the firmament and visible from... It would be visible from everyone who looks up, who looks north, would see something. It might be I bigger depending on where you are, how your distance from yeah. it. But everyone would see something and they'd be like, what on earth is that thing in that particular direction? No, yeah, I'm know. kind of imagining it low. Maybe that's my problem. Yeah, if it was really low, no, you wouldn't see it. I'm imagining it above curries <laughs> right now, which is no, not that high. It could be really high in the sky. We don't know. Uh, again, this is we can wildly speculate here. We don't have much to go off. <laughs> but I'm saying that's the biblical true end time scenario. Once that war happens and that fire comes down and destroys everybody who fought, Everyone's in heaven for judgment. Done. Story over. Everything that we exist uh, exists right now that we call Earth, lake of fire, destroyed, gone. That's what that's where the hell comes from. That concept of a burning eternity. But there's no. I don't think it is a burning eternity. I think it they get destroyed. Okay, there you go, guys. I think I'll stop it there about 20 minutes or so, just shy. And that's just a, just a peek at what happens over there at Tales Under the Big Top with me and my wife, just discussing conspiracy theories. And for those who have just joined, uh, yeah, my wife is a free thinker. She's very open-minded. Uh, she's certainly anti-authoritarian. She she has refused every mandate the government has thrown at us. And um, she's done all that without ever really researching conspiracy theories like I do. Uh, so a lot of these concepts I'm discussing are new to her, okay? Um, she's heard me discuss these things before on the channel, of course. She's aware of them, but um, she hasn't been doing this for over a decade like I have, and it's a relatively new world to her, to her personally, if you get what I mean. Uh, so I've, I, what I'm doing in these shows and what we've decided to do is I'm going to try and explain topics to her in the current conspiracy world and share everything I know about these ideas and just gauge her reactions as somebody who's hearing it for the first time. And uh, that's what you heard there, a snippet of that. And naturally, she had all the questions everybody who's hearing these things for the first time would have. And it's just a bit of fun, and we do definitely have a lot of fun having these discussions. So I hope you enjoyed that little talk there, guys. Um, I'm just going to quickly switch this back to a slide. Let's, let's do a slideshow, shall we? What shall we do? Uh, I'll let my tips for truthers just roll in the background. Why not, eh? Why not? And anything will do. That's fine. That's fine. And I'll switch it up to some Millennial Kingdom stuff in a bit. But yeah, guys, uh, thanks for joining me. I've got a decent uh, group of people here. What's that? 123 viewers so far. I did do a, a call to action in my Telegram group earlier to see if anybody at all wants to call in and have a bit of a chat tonight, okay? And I would love if anybody is interested to let me know. But as a filter system... I, you do have to have been a member of Telegram already. So anybody who's a member of my Telegram group and you are interested in calling in, let me know in on my You Conspiracy Announcements section on there, okay? Let me know if you're interested, guys. If you're listening in and you're a part of the Telegram and you want to just have a chat, share any of your thoughts and ideas on things, you know, any questions you might have at all. Um, but obviously my, my, my vetting process is you have to be a relatively known entity. I'm not just going to let some, let some random start coming on and ranting at me about some random things, okay? But if you are a member of the Telegram and you do want to have a chat, let me know, please, guys. Just go there and make it known, okay? Just make it known to me. Send me a message or something. Send me a personal message. Because I do, I do like uh, call-in shows. I've, I've done a few over the years. I did one uh, maybe a month or two ago, and it went really well. And it was really great to connect with people, just the audience in general. So, I, so hopefully, hopefully, someone will offer themselves up to do this. Um, but in the meantime, I guess there's a few things I can discuss. Uh, let me just quickly close this tab here. And we'll get this up. 
And I was actually just watching uh, Shelly's new video over at There's No Place Like Home channel. I don't know if you guys have heard of her, but she's a bit of a, a well-known entity and name in the... Um, in the conspiracy world, talking about the Millennial Kingdom theory. I've had her on my channel, you can go and check that out, um, and I am going to be speaking with her and somebody else on Tuesday, so I'll be sending some links for that soon as well. Should be good fun, should be a nice conversation, we're going to have a bit of a back and forth and discussion about all things Millennial Kingdom. But she, she made this video recently, which is quite interesting. I'll just share the screen with you guys. Da -da -da -da, screen share. There we go. So as you can see, here, um, it's uh, the latest one, which I've just watched there, 17 minutes. And it's called, Well, This Is Awkward. <laughs> and uh, it's quite fascinating because this came off the back. If you haven't already, guys, go subscribe to her channel. Um, there's no place like home here. Shelly's channel. And go watch some of her videos. Go check out the entire backlog because she, she covers some amazing in-depth things. And she, she, she's, just, she's just thinking out loud like the rest of us, you know. And we have some great conversations on there. And uh, again, again, she's just a, a lovely woman with a lot of questions and a lot of thoughts. Okay, so she has this thing called Question the Narrative. And this is actually in response to the backlash that's going around currently against the Millennial Kingdom theory. So, you know, the Millennial uh, Kingdom already happening theory has been kind of around for maybe three or four years online, something like that. And it's been, you know, it's been growing over those three or four years and gaining momentum quite rapidly in the, maybe the past year or so. I jumped to the bandwagon quite late, to be honest, you know, but I felt like I couldn't really be quiet about this topic any longer. It was just gnawing away <laughs> at the back of my mind and I was like I've got it I've got to talk about this you know I, I can't stop thinking about this concept and uh, Shelly's very similar and she's been rolling with it for a few years as well and it's gained so much traction now that it's, get, it's getting the attention of those who are staunch you know no this has not happened Jesus has not come back and returned yet uh, this is the doctrine of devils type people, you know. This is evil. This is the great deception. We kind of get stuff like that, you know. Uh, this is clearly just a, an evil work of Satan to detract people away and make them take the mark of the beast or to make them have a false sense of security or something. And it's kind of none of that. None of those arguments hold any water to what we're actually saying. But most backlash has come recently from other channels discussing preterism. You know, the specific movement created by a Jesuit, you know, maybe 200, 300 years ago. And um, someone did a group, a channel, not naming names, you know, or anything, did make a expose of preterism, you know, showing how it's it's rooted and created by um, by Jesuits. Therefore, we can't trust anything, you know. It was created as a, as a counter-reformation movement by the Catholics, to go against the reformation of the Protestants, you know, and it was in, in order to help the Catholic Church maintain their predominant power over the people by, um, you know, getting people rid of the idea that maybe they are um, the Antichrist system or something like that, or the beast, you know, and it's basically, it was made by Jesuits to hide the corruption of the Catholic Church or something like that. And, you know, I, I watched that that show and all I could think was this is ridiculous you haven't even covered at all the quotes from Jesus himself repeatedly saying I am coming back very soon not in 2000 years I'm paraphrasing there I know I'm paraphrasing there but there's far too <laughs> if I was to amalgamate all the quotes together it was pretty imminent in his language. He was saying, I'm coming back. The time is nigh. The time is at hand. I come quickly. These things must shortly come to pass. Not, you know, this temple will be torn down very quickly, you know. Uh, you, you know. You will not have made it through all the cities of Israel before I, before I return, you know. You will, uh, this generation will not pass away before all these things are fulfilled it was all very and you know anyone who objects to these things has never mentioned the fact that this theory wasn't created by the jesuits these are the words of jesus christ himself so what if a jesuit formalized it labeled it and created a movement out of it that doesn't mean they came up with it 
<laughs> that's not what happened here, you know. And it's kind of, if, if anything, that was probably their way of covering for themselves because they knew people would expose them as evil eventually. And if people think it's this theory is created by evil people, then no one's going to take it seriously. Or so maybe it was like a long con situation. Who knows? But this is not created by a Jesuit. And even then, preterism itself is a bit of a straw man to break down and debunk because that's not what people like me or Shelley are really talking about. We're not espousing the doctrine of preterism, okay? Sure, there are elements of preterist thought in what we're discussing, but even preterists don't necessarily consider there to be a physical millennial reign on Earth. Even some preterists or partial preterists would say, you know, only all the uh, the prophecies of Daniel, you know, and the uh, Olivia... Dis- I, live it to, I can't pronounce that. The discourse, you know, and the um, the predictions of Revelation, you know, are partially done, and there's still the millennial reign to come in the future. You know, they they some part most preterists, uh, you know, think uh, the reign is spirit a spiritual thing, and it's still to or it's perhaps still to come in the future. What we're saying is is something else. We're saying Jesus literally said he was about to return not long after he originally was died on the cross. It seems like he did. It seems like the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, yes. And it seems like the last thing we got in prophecy was that there'd be a millennial kingdom reign physical on earth. And we're saying there seems to be evidence to say that did actually happen and it's been covered up. And now we're living in the little season. Not all preterists talk about us living in the little season. They don't even mention that. It's not the same thing, you know, and a lot of these debunkers have just been terrible at debunking it, beating up one straw man after another and not really talking about the fact that Jesus did say, I come back quickly. This is soon. This is happening in their lifetime for the people around him during that time, you know. Anyway, Shelley Shelley made a video here saying, well, this is awkward because it turns out futurist dispensational doctrine, which says that, you know, the tribulation is at hand in the future and the millennial kingdom is yet to come. The the, the predominant thought by most churches today, well, that also was created by a Jesuit. <laughs> she, just, she lays out how, you know, you cannot say one thing out of one side of the mouth and not, and not talk about the other angle, that both preterism and futurism are both doctrines of Jesuits. You know, so the <laughs> I think they're both technically wrong in some way, personally. And I, I've said this before, you know, and I, I've and we need to find a new name for this movement because it's not preterism what we're talking about here. It's not this old, weird thing that's been around for a long time that everyone's saying we're talking about. We're not talking about the doctrine of preterism. This is something else. This is I don't I don't know how to explain that. People call it uh, I don't know, um, what's it? Little seasonists you could call us rather than praetorists or something like that. I don't know. This is uh, the the Millie Rain theory. You know I don't know what this is exactly. Uh, it needs a new name. It needs it needs something more formalized I suppose. But it's it's certainly not praetorism, which um, is the straw man that gets attacked. You know. And we are theorizing in a truly conspiratorial sense because of everything else that we've learned over the years while being in this realm that it seems like history has been covered up. And what we call the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages was not a time of slow down progression um, due to a dominant Christian uh, worldview, which slowed down the progression of, of technology and, and people, you know, and was full of disease. And then it was it, it turned out it was actually an incredibly prosperous beautiful time to be alive perhaps because jesus christ was ruling physically in the new jerusalem and people were making pilgrimage to him regularly in a very literal physical sense and uh, some people people do not like this there are people out there who cannot bear that idea and you know i read a lot of the comments on these things i do i read a lot of the comments and uh, and I've I've kind of made this point too, and I, I kind of tried to discuss it with JT Follows JC on my channel with Joe, and when we had the conversation, it seems like money's the issue here, okay? It seems like discussing these particular topics is offensive to many established Christian leaders because they perhaps wrote volumes and volumes of books discussing how tribulation's about to pass and Jesus is about to return. And this theory blows it all out of the water and probably makes them think, oh, no. Oh, oh no, all my work is going to mean nothing now, you know. And 
some people go extreme in the comments and say they've spent most of their career making Jesus out to be a liar, as though he didn't say he was about to return imminently and we should be looking forward 2,000 years, you know, to a distant time. Um, and some, pe some people are not going to willingly accept the truth, if this is the truth, so easily because they've invested so heavily in the lie, just like most of the people in the world, you know. And again, I'm not saying these people can't change their mind. They probably will eventually. I, th I think, to be honest, if they sincerely look into this concept with an open mind and heart as a child, reread the word from this perspective, they'll see that it actually fits a lot better than the mental gymnastic kind of doctrine they've had to jump through hoops to try and make sense in their minds for so long, such as the futurist doctrine. I think they'll find it's actually a lot simpler and a lot easier through the preterist view because it, well, I say preterist, through the little seasonist view, you know, because it actually shows that Jesus wasn't a liar and he meant what he said when he says I was returning quickly and he did fulfill his promises. He did rule for a thousand years and Satan has been loose for a little season and what is coming next is not the great tribulation but it's the final great white throne judgment at the end of time you know and if we need to figure out where we are in in the timeline we really do otherwise we're open to some serious deception and that isn't to say you know that saying isn't isn't going to attempt to do what he did in the tribulation there may be a mock mark of the beast or signs and wonders and heavens and famines and wars and and you know pestilences and all sorts of horrible things happening you may try and orchestrate some kind of epic I don't know, blacking out of the sun and all these type of things using modern technology. He might try to recreate what happened in tribulation. But what comes after that will not be the millennial reign of Christ this time. It will be the final great white throne judgment at the end of time after a great Gog and Magog war, which surrounds the camp of saints. You know? And this is the thing. A lot of people in my comments are telling me repeatedly, I was never told about the little season thing. Most of the pastors and these people who we go to in these church groups, you know, they always get to that part in Revelations 20 and say, and this is probably just like, this doesn't really apply to us because this is some distant time in the future and it probably will only last like a week or two anyway and then it's done, you know. And that's it. They move on and never discuss it. And, you know, I, I was theorizing and I was just thinking about this concept earlier and, you know, my, my brain does reel sometimes and I forget what I'm, I'm trying to say and I'm sorry if I ramble a bit on this one. But, you know, these just the tra trail of thoughts I'm getting. And, you know, I was reading Revelation 20. I was reading where it says, you know, and Satan's loose for a little season, you know, where he gathers an army um, whose numbers are the sands of the sea and they march up the broad plain of the earth and make war with the camp of saints and then... God brings fire down from heaven and then it's great final great white throne judgment. You know, you, you read that and it's kind of, it's such a quick summary of something which we know will take a long time and it's probably far more complicated than what we were simply just told in these, these like four or five throwaway lines at the end of Revelations, you know, uh, Revelation, sorry, singular. <laughs> and um, I, I couldn't help but feel this is like a Genesis 6 situation again, right at the beginning of the book. Never mind the end. Let's go right to the beginning of the book. And you read Genesis 6, and it says, There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, after the sons of God came unto the daughters of men and bore offspring, the same men became giants, mighty men of old, men of renown. And then it moves on to Adam and Eve. <laughs> it very just quickly moves on. Just very quickly, just the story shifts you know and then we start talking about uh, the creation of man and all these other things you know and their story and it's kind of like you, you know there's more something happened there there's a huge epic story somewhere that wasn't really told in genesis you know wait, wait, wait. it's like whoa, whoa back back up a bit a bit a minute just just wait a minute there genesis 6 what happened here with giants sons of god coming and taking wives of the daughters what what what's that all about you know but he just breezes past that and carries on the story talking about the, the genealogies of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, you know, and then talking about the people of Israel and so forth. And it just goes on and on and on about genealogies and lineages, you know. And it's kind of like it just leaves that as a footnote at the beginning and just espouses nothing extra on that extremely odd paragraph. Like, <laughs> very odd thing to say, wasn't it? You know, and it just moves on. And it's written in a way that assumes the reader already understands what that story is. The sons of God coming unto the daughters of men and creating giants. 
it, it assumes, oh, well, we already know about that. that. This book is not about that story. If you want to hear about that story, then go and read the book about it. We all know what that is, you know, and then you, you, know, you look into it and you find this thing called the Book of Enoch, which lays out in detail what Genesis 6 was talking about. And it's kind of like it fills in that gap, you know, and it's written as though the, the reader would have already read that would already understand that part of history, that ancient time before the flood. They already, we already, you already know about all of that, you know. We don't need to go on for another 300 pages explaining that history. I'm sure you all already know, right? And then it just moves on to the next part of the story in Genesis. Well, Revelation 20 gives me that vibe. It gives me that vibe where it says, you know, and then after the millennial reign is over, Satan is let loose for a little season. Moving on. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, what, what happens during that little season? How long is a little season? Uh, what happens to all the people who live during the millennial reign during that little season? Are there, is there anyone left? Where, where are all these details we're missing? And I bet there's a book out there that we don't know about that's been hidden from us that explains everything. And that's why it's written like that in Revelation. I bet that prophecy was already given to, to John and the apostles during that time when he was writing that on the island of Patmos, so they say, you know... And I, I bet it was already n common knowledge when he says, oh, you know, when Satan's let loose for a little season. I bet they'd already discussed it. And Jesus had already explained thoroughly what's going to happen after the millennial reign to them. And it was already written down in a book, perhaps, and documented. And we're just missing that book. I bet I, I bet that's what's happened. And you're like, like Enoch was kind of uncovered in the past hundred years and, and brought more in. And it says that Ethiopia has always had the book of Enoch there as their canon and all these type of things. And it kind of all started coming more to light to us and it, that, part of Genesis 6 was more explained more thoroughly and it's kind of back then it was understood well understood knowledge anyway in basic history but then it got lost to us and then we rediscovered it I bet there's a book out there in a cave somewhere just waiting to be rediscovered that fills in the gap of the prophecy of the little season and what happens during that time now this is just me speculating I'm just this is a wild theory but I get that vibe I get the vibe from that throwaway comment in Revelations 20 that oh the devil's let loose for a little season and then you, <laughs> with no details of what happens in the little season, it's Genesis 6 over again. Oh, and the sons of God came and the daughters of men and created giants. And let's move on. You know? it's like, there's, a, there's like a thousand years of history there to that one statement alone about the giants. And Enoch fills it out. And there's maybe what? 250 to perhaps even a thousand years of history for the little season we don't know about. With no details about what happened during that time that we're missing. And what we're supposed to live through during that time. You know, that prophecy. I bet it's somewhere. I bet it is. Uh, let's just check under the vaults under the Vatican, shall we, and see what they're hiding away. Who knows? Who honestly knows? But this, I just got that feeling reading that section. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, it's written as though the reader already understands that story. <laughs> so, of course, you already know about Satan's little season and what happens during that time. We were told that years ago. You know, we all know about that. But you know, right now, I'm just focusing on what Jesus told me to tell you, which is specifically, you know, about the coming tribulation that we're all about to experience. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what that book was about, you know. And um, maybe there is like a after Revelation, there's a little season book that should be in our canon. And Revelation wasn't the end. It wasn't, isn't supposed to be the end of the book, you know. Maybe there is like a. Um, a sequel book to the canon that we've been given, you know, and there's more information about what, you know, what it's going to be like to live during the millennial reign in more thorough detail that wasn't simply said in Zechariah, you know, and all these type of things. Who knows? There's probably more somewhere hidden that we that maybe we'll never get now. That's the point. We've been thoroughly deceived in this time, you know, and we're not supposed to know all the details or that we're supposed to be in this time. That's the point. And I don't, I don't know, what, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of that random train of thought that just came to me there? Honestly, I was just, I was just thinking about it. And, and again, I, I get that weird vibe from it. I really do. Um, right, what's going on in the chat, guys? We've got quite a few people here. 178, that's excellent. Thanks for being here, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys get some value from my random ramblings. And uh, I know I go on. I do know I, I, I tend to not stop once I start. Uh, but I just get excited about these things. I get really excited about these. So what have we got here? Um, uh, sorry, guys. All right. Well, it's hard to just go back and read so much because there's a lot of comments. Uh, so I'm just going to go from the, the latest <laughs> the latest comments and just see what you guys are saying in live action. Um Do 
just curious as waiting for the Kings of Kings. What are your thoughts on the genetically marked with a little symbol there? Perhaps more susceptible to be coerced as Satan's army against the saints. Wanting to die, but death will flee from them. I'm not sure if there's a connection there necessarily right now. Um, me and my wife did actually discuss this concept in the end of the world video we made, which was played at the start of this. Um, you can go to our the links down below in my description um, to Tales Under the Big Top, my, me and my wife's podcast. And we do discuss that particular thing. Uh, we had to uh, bleep out a few things because we said too much. <laughs> you know what the algorithm's like with this particular subject. Um, but from what I saw, it seems like this is more of a depopulation attempt than um, maybe to, to corrupt people to the point where they become super soldiers yet. It could, could be that the corruption that has been caused by this particular thing you're referencing, maybe the solution we're going to be offered is a mark that will in some way enhance us or make us invincible. And that's where the transhumanist angle might come into it, creating super soldiers in a way superhumans that could then f willingly and believably fight against the camp of saints in their own minds they'll think themselves to be strong enough you know um and again we do we do go through this thoroughly in that talk um and there's only so much i think i can really mention here before um, we get in trouble so i'm, I'm probably going to leave it okay <laughs> probably going to leave it there but it's an interesting thought experiment interesting question as well so thanks for asking um I'm just, I was just thinking as well. Sorry, I'm about to go on another round, but I've got to say this while it's still in my mind before I forget. But I was listening to me and my wife there talk, okay? And we were discussing the end of the world scenario about the great white throne judgment and the war that comes just before it. Okay, and we're trying to figure out how would Satan convince the entire earth to come together as one to go fight against the camp of saints? Now, there would have to be a deception at play maybe okay maybe he does convince everybody to just be evil and against jesus thoroughly and go knowingly and witting and knowingly make war with jesus maybe i feel like there's going to be a bit of a lie at play i think like the majority of people that make that war with the camp of saints are going to be fooled and we were speculating that okay so everybody's been programmed to believe aliens are attacking us if they were to witness an enormous mothership just appear above everything okay we think Independence Day, you know what I mean? We ev Everyone's... If anyone saw an enormous, vast, sky-expanding, floating thing in the sky appear, everyone would assume, 99% of the global, well, earthly population would assume, aliens have come to attack. Even a lot of Christians would likely believe that too, because they're not all they're not all flat earthers, you know what I mean? We I think we can forget sometimes in our little echo chamber in the conspiracy world here that what we believe is not believed by the majority of the population on Earth. Okay, they do not even know about the things we talk about. May we may constitute as a whole, I don't know, 0.5 percent of the entire population of the Earth, the people that know the stuff we know and think about. Okay. So when when this thing appears in the sky, let's say it's either a giant cube or a giant pyramid of some kind that spans 1,380 miles to the, to the eyes and everyone who looks north could just see this thing in the distance, you know what I mean, if they're not close to it. All right. 99.5% of, of the Earth will say, <gasps> aliens, okay? That's what they've been programmed to believe. And then there'll be a mass events perhaps where people will be convinced to band together as humanity as one to go fight the common enemy we now face an alien threat <laughs> that's come to destroy earth and they'll tell us all these things saying the aliens have communicated with us at the world leaders and they've said they've come to bring war and to destroy us and that we need to give up um, resistance is futile, you know, and the truth is nobody's talked to them. They're all in it together, remember. These are all evil people who control the world. They've just lied to the public and said the aliens said they're here to kill us all. We need to band together. We need every able-bodied man, woman, and child to come together to fight the aliens, everybody. It's time. It's time. To, it's come together time, you know. It's time to drop our differences, stop these petty wars. Let's all become one unit and all go march up towards the north where this thing seems to be chilling, and let's get it before it gets us. Let's get them, <laughs> <laughs> is that not 
the Camp of Saints scenario? Is that not simply New Jerusalem has revealed itself? It's the end. And Satan's convinced everyone on earth to come together and go make war with the Camp of Saints. Is that not what's just happened? And I was thinking about there must be an extra layer to this. And I was thinking about Project Bluebeam is, is included here, isn't it? And the fake alien invasion stuff that's been pushed on us. And that we have, well, we've been researching in the conspiracy world for a while that they're planning a fake alien invasion using holographic technology, perhaps some drones and explosives and some theatrics involved with the holograms to make us think UFOs are fighting or blasting us when it's probably just drones blasting us with a hologram wrapped around it. So, you know, like the plot of uh, Spider-Man, for example, you know, Far From Home, I think it was called, or No Way Home or something. You know, where Mysterion had his own holographic projections and drones creating monsters that weren't really there. Predictive programming stuff. They were telling you the truth, you know. <laughs> but imagine if they do something like that. Say the mothership appears and it's just Jesus chilling with his saints. He's not going to attack us because that's just not what he does. You know, that's 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 the son of God. He's not here to just wipe us all out cruelly and destroy the the Empire State, State Building with a laser like in Independence Day. That's not going to happen. It's literally just going to become visible. And then that's the final call then, isn't it? This is right. It's the end of the script, guys. Make your move, you know. And he's just going to sit there, all right? But then what the evil controllers could do is then do the fake alien invasion thing and make it seem like all these UFOs have just appeared when the mothership appears and start blowing everything up and attacking places and, you know, and it's the ultimate false flag event, isn't it? And we are going to believe the mothership has just sent all these tiny little ships out to, to kill us all. <laughs> when really... It had nothing to do with the mothership that just appeared. It's just chilling there. It did nothing. They have gone out of their way to release everything at that moment against humanity to convince us that it's the invading aliens that did this. That would be a very convincing scenario to make everyone rally together to fight back, right? It's not just enough that a ship just suddenly appears. That, let's say New Jerusalem just appears and everyone's been convinced that's the mothership of evil aliens. That's not enough. But if they can make it seem like the evil aliens have attacked by using all their technology to make a false alien invasion, then we would be convinced to go and make war with it, right? To defend ourselves. We can see what they do. This this mothership, these aliens are vicious. They're merciless. They'll stop at nothing to subjugate and enslave all of mankind. They've come to destroy the earth. Not on our watch. Let's band together, everybody. Let's do this. You know what I mean? Let's go make war with this thing and destroy it. Next <laughs> That thing did nothing. That ship did nothing. It, we were duped again. Because I'm trying. I'm just trying to figure out how does all this stuff we've been researching fit into this story, like Project Bluebeam. And I realised it does. It can work. That can still be a useful tool to them when the New Jerusalem appears, as I've just explained. And it's just just a little working theory of mine again, just to fit into the narrative. How does it all fit? Just trying to think logically here about what we already know. And what we now theorise we may also know with this millennial reign already happening thing. And in terms of the future end war, I, I can see that as a reasonable scenario playing out. And everyone, everyone's been prepped to go along with that script and believe every, every second of it. <laughs> and then there'll be us saying, nah, that ain't, that ain't an evil mothership. That, that, I think that's New Jerusalem, you know. And if we voiced that opinion during this time, they would think we were insane. They would be like, aliens are literally killing us and blowing up our cities. And you're there saying you're not going to go and fight? What? Are, you're a traitor to all of mankind. And it's likely, <laughs> just like in true tribulation repeating itself once more, we might be beheaded <laughs> by these people. Because they think we're evil traitors who want mankind to be destroyed and we're so stupid and vile. And, you know, that it's like in the trenches in World War One. Anybody who doesn't fight gets put in prison or killed. You know what I mean? It could be that's what happens to the Christians who know about this stuff like we're talking about and are like, nah, this is, this is what we've been theorizing. This is the mothership appearing and the faking an alien invasion. This is Jesus. We're in the little season. This is the end of the line. Like, this is what's happening right now. That's the camp of saints and satan's trying to convince us to make war with it literally the room would be silent they'd all look at you they'd have a look of disgust on their face and they'd all look at each other and go get him <laughs> like, they would kill us 
just for saying something like that because did these people have just lost their homes their loved ones due to the fake alien invasion the first wave you know these people have just had their entire cities destroyed they've just watched their own children be crushed in front of them by falling debris or something and these stupid backwards like desert religion believing christians are still talking about jesus during a time like this where there's unequivocal proof and evidence that it's all fake because aliens have turned up which means it's vast infinite space you know god isn't real jesus was not real that was all a lie clearly don't they see the aliens the stupid retarded christians that's what they'll think that's how they'll act and react to people like us saying these things at the time we will seem like backwards lunatics in the inside of alien invasions. We'll seem like people who just can't face the truth that our stupid ancient religion is just not true, you know? <laughs> it's like, you science-denying, alien-denying traitors. <laughs> That's how they'll see us. That is how they will see us. And um, hopefully... More people will see videos like this before this happens and they'll understand that maybe we're not so crazy. Maybe we knew what was going on. Maybe we did, you know. Maybe this is our best guess. Maybe closer to the truth in the end. <laughs> That's all I've got, guys. This is my best guess. I don't I don't know. You know, I don't know how it's all going to play out. Um, but I, and I, I, I have had this state of mind for a long time where I, I do not want to be caught off guard. I'm not saying I'm going to get it figured out and I'm going to know exactly what's happening. But I'm going to do everything I can to theorize every possibility I'm capable of theorizing about. So when whatever happens, happens, I can very quickly piece together what it may actually be. You know, and that's why I do this. It's, it's a personal thing. I, I just I just like I just like to know, you know, I like to I like to I don't like surprises, I guess. <laughs> I'm trying to say <laughs> but uh, yeah, at the same time, I, I don't think I'm going to ever figure out exactly what's going to go down. But. I think I've I've come up with a, with some I don't know I think I've come up with some pretty good ideas there guys haven't I Anyway let's check the chat let's see what's going on let's see what you guys are doing all right Um Notice how many movies have the theme of nuking a mothership. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's the hubris in these movies that they make us believe in these movies that humanity wins. Humanity prevails on this one, you know. And Jesus, at the end of the day, he does come to destroy the earth. You know, the heaven and earth will be thrown into the lake of fire. It will be destroyed. And then there'll be a new heaven and earth. And what comes afterwards will be better than anything we've, we could ever imagine, you know. Um, but Jesus does come to destroy the earth in the end essentially you know and that's that is the plot of every alien film you know that the aliens come to destroy the earth so it is an inversion isn't it in the movies of perhaps the new jerusalem story so we have to consider it we really we do have to consider this um i know flat earth sci-fi movies is weird i guess yeah i guess so um <laughs> what's this <laughs> savage lee says when jesus returns i think he'll be carrying an imi jericho chambered in 0.45 acp quote the hebrew hammer chambered in god's caliber <laughs> end quote righteous <laughs> uh yeah, maybe maybe i don't i don't know i don't think it'd be wielding much much like that but yeah that's funny uh, it would be fired the second it became it will be fired on the second it became visible. Maybe not, you know, maybe it wouldn't be because um, the programming shows us that humans try to make contact first. Then they realize they were foolish to even try, you know, or something like that. Uh, remember the film Stargate in which the evil alien travels inside a massive pyramid? Jesus calls himself the cornerstone or capstone that the builders rejected. Yes, yes, that is interesting. Um... Paul, you're a dad. Once a man is a dad, he seeks all truth and dangers, etc. God gives us a sense to s off, figure things out. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, well, you know, I was kind of like this before I was a dad too. <laughs> I've, I've always been like this. 
Um, but, I, you know, having a child definitely is, is a strong motivator. I will say that. Absolutely. In Superman, his fortress of solitude is the North Pole. Yes. Can you comment on the behaviour of the British royals? Um, well, you know, I've not really looked into that Masonic theatre puppet show that they put in front of the public there to keep them distracted that much. Uh, but from what I've gathered, it seems like something dodgy's happened behind the scenes, right? And I do not know what's happened to that particular lady. Um, but me and my wife have been speculating for a while. And could it be, maybe, like father, like son... Every new king perhaps has to th offer up a sacrifice of their first wife, perhaps. Who knows? Who knows? You know, we're just speculating here. I don't I don't really know. And um, at the end of the day, it's, it's a huge distraction. I would say that. It's a massive distraction. Um, it's the magician's trick at the end of the day. If they're trying to get you to look at the royals, then there's probably something else going on we should be paying attention to. Um, that's just in British culture. That's how we do things here. You know, the... the um, they always roll out a puff piece about what the royals are up to when they're trying to distract the public from something. Uh, but that's all they that's all they are, you know. They're just a they're just an entertainment wing of the of the propaganda machine that is the British government, you know, I would say. <laughs> that's where the royals are useful now. Um They're reptilians. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic one, isn't it? Uh, this channel is interesting, says All Glory to God. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying uh, what I have to offer you. I appreciate that. Um, there is a picture of this pyramid you speak of. NASA supposedly photographed in deep space back in, like, the 70s, I think. You know, I've never seen the image, but uh, I do know uh, Joe at uh, JT Follows JC was telling me someone tried to make a debunking video about... Um, Praetorism again, the straw man against him saying, Oh, well, Joe believes in this falsified image of the pyramid. And like, Joe's ever even mentioned it before. He's like, What? I don't even talk about that. <laughs> but I've heard of it. I've never seen it. I'm not going to reference it myself because I don't know if I can trust anything that comes from, you know, NASA's CGI. Like, I don't know if I'm going to trust anything that they supposedly photographed, really. I'm, I, I don't know. Uh, the royals are connected to the tribe of Dan, but are they not? Uh, I, I just. I don't know if I can believe anything they say about where the true connections of bloodlines come from. It's likely they're all the descendants of Nephilim more than likely than anything biblical. Um, there's a British guy that hacked NASA. I'm sure there is. And I'm glad the political theatrics aren't solely an American thing. Yeah, you know, it's it's all a dog and pony show. It's it's all a kangaroo court in Britain. It's all nonsense and, and just, just bollocks, you know. It's part of my uh, British... My British uh, swearing slang, but I am not interested in following anything like that. I haven't uh, have a I haven't owned a TV aerial in like six years. And I don't intend to ever get one ever again. I don't watch the BBC. I do not watch broadcast television. I control what I see, and I do not read the newspapers or follow. I'm actually incredibly unplugged from the mainstream narrative. I don't know what's going on. People like you tell me, okay. <laughs> I got my thing I like to focus on. I got my own research I like to dig into. And I got my family life and my, my company and my, my life to focus on. Um, I'm not, I don't give in or watch TV much because it's just all fear. It's propaganda. It's pain and misery. And and it, once you watch it, I've, I've, I've felt it before and I see it happen. And once you start getting locked into their narrative, you can start losing your mind a little bit. You know, you can start get, really getting fearful. And that's all it's for unplug from the narrative you know I've, I've said this plenty of times before and i'll say it again if it wasn't for that box in the corner of the room most of the earth's problems wouldn't exist because people wouldn't be hearing about them listening to them or being riled up or corralled or moved or motivated to act in certain ways because of the things they've seen you know that that, that camera has been pointed at things for a specific reason to get you to react and it's done a good job over its like 70 years of existence at controlling the masses into not only propagating the false narrative that has been projected to them through that thing but living in fear of it too if if people just switched it off and got on with their own lives a lot of the world's problems would very quickly disappear not everything perfectly obviously that's i'm not stupid i understand this also includes phones as well and the media the you know and the yeah, the social media aspect of things as well, all of that included. I, I don't get involved with social media debates and things like that too. You know, um, 
and I'm much happier for it. And I think everybody else would be too if they realise it's not necessary. Um, not necessary at all. And if you're in Britain, by the way, you don't have to pay for a TV licence. It's a con. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> You turn it off, don't watch live television, stop paying the taxes that go towards paying for the corrupt BBC. Just stop it. Anyway, what's going on here? Um, Star Wars is about the war between the fallen angels, hence the name Star Wars. They just put it in fake space as Hollywood is the propaganda machine to turn truth into fiction and invert it. Ah. Good point, yeah, and obviously I, fallen angels, I believe, or angels are stars. I do believe that, and that seems to be biblically grounded. Um, no TV here either, says Lisa, that's excellent. Um, I turned it off in 2013, says Blaze, fantastic. Yeah, we're all, you know, well, I'm preaching to the choir here, aren't I? I'm sure we're all in on it, you know, we're, I'm sure I don't need to tell you guys what to do about this kind of thing you already know you're all cool we're all cool here you know we know what we're doing and um, i had a tv but not right now but i watched youtube on it it's better than a tiny screen yeah i know screens are useful tools absolutely but mainstream broadcasts are not uh, they are run by tools there's a difference all of these devices are black mirrors and can be used for evil and programming yes absolutely we've got to be careful um Uh, understanding conspiracy, could you interview Alan of the Mud Floodwars Armageddon YouTube channel about the millennial reign? Um, you know, uh, me, me and Alan have a bit of a weird, tenuous relationship. I mean, I know he's a regular in my chat here, and I, you know, I don't mind the guy coming in to talk and everything. Um, but he doesn't agree with me on the Nephilim like clowns thing, and he has made videos espousing how I am I am supporting the genocide of people by saying they're not human. Um. <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to have somebody who accuses me of, pro of promoting genocide on the channel necessarily. I don't know how much of a amicable conversation we could have. Maybe it's best we just do our separate things because of that. But I am aware that he was actually one of the original people on YouTube to discuss the Millennial Kingdom theory. And I'm not going to stop other people from going to check out his work. You know, go check it out. Uh, go listen to what the guy has to say. I know he's been demonetized, had his channels taken down over the years, you know, and I know he's he's, he's not afraid to speak his mind on things. So go ahead, you know, go check out um, Alan from Budford was Armageddon and listen to his work on this thing. But unfortunately, I do feel like bridges were burnt. <laughs> um, and I don't feel like I, uh, um, you know, it's, it's my fault necessarily, but, you know, my initial reaction to this was, you know, you have some nerve talking up here in my chat after making a video calling me a genocide supporter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I don't think he's evil. You know, I don't think the guy has bad intentions or he's a shill or anything. I'm, and I'm not into that kind of world. You know, I don't. I don't. I'm not a shill hunter. Um, I, you know, yeah. You know, I all props and credit where it's due. He was one of the first people to be talking about this topic, and you should definitely go check out his work. Um, but I think that's as far as our relationship's going to go, unfortunately. Um. I use my TV, Xbox, and phone to study the Bible. Well, there you go. That's turning uh, the negative tools into something useful for sure. Um, the odd thing for me is that all Christians believe that some of the prophecies of Revelation and the Bible have occurred. This means we're all preterists. This means we accept a preterist view. Well, not necessarily, John. I don't. I don't think that means we're all preterists exactly. I think there's still a lot of debate and argument among many factions in Christianity of just where we are on the tribulation timeline, and no one's agreeing or believing it. Um, but what real preterists and partial preterists believe is that all prophecy, pretty much either up into just before the millennial reign began, or some people in full preterist view believe we are living in the millennial kingdom now and all prophecy was fulfilled and the book is now done with partial preterists may believe either the little season is still yet to come or the millennial reign is still about to come but all prophecy prior to that has still been fulfilled like the um, like tribulation all these type of things and maybe yeah, maybe even or the temple being destroyed is what a lot of people point to in mainly the preterist view what we're talking about is is something again i've explained earlier something else john um we don't we don't we don't really 
believe what the preterists are talking about. And we we're, we're talking about something else here, really. And to debunk preterism is not to debunk what we're talking about. It's not the same thing. It's a straw man they're attacking and equating us with it. Um, really, I think I think it's something else. Um, question: Do you think we are descendants of the resuscitated and/or the souls that need to be born to have the opportunity to be saved? Says Rachel L. I don't know. I don't know what we are. I've speculated. You know, it it says in the Book of Revelation in twenty. Um, at the end of the millennial reign, sorry, the the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years has ended. So you could argue that is immediately after the thousand year reign ends, the dead in Christ, sorry, the dead who maybe maybe didn't even get to know Christ, so the rest of the dead, those who were not resurrected in light bodies maybe, or didn't live through the millennial reign, the rest of them, are then suddenly brought into the world. Now, is that sudden? Everybody all at once, bing, appears, you know, who has lived before Christ, suddenly appears? Probably not. I think there may that may be something similar, may, may be a little bit that might have happened, perhaps, to get things going. This might explain the incubator baby problem, the orphan train problem, where there's just a lot of people everywhere and they don't know what to do with them. Um... But it's like it's more likely that we are going to be slowly in stages introduced into the world, being born into the world, um, one soul at a time out of Sheol, you know. So I think, you know, when Christ descended and preached to the dead, you know, obviously he went to Abraham's bosom and released those prior first, uh, you know, in the first resurrection. But there would have been everybody else there he also preached to. And you don't preach to people who can't be saved. You know what I mean? So it's likely he may have said to the you know the first people who were promised to live through the millennial reign, right, you come with us, guys. You're being released now. You're going to come reign with me for a thousand years. Everybody else, we're coming back for you at the end of the millennial reign. You get your chance to live then, you know. Maybe. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. You know, there's, there's gaps here. And I think there's things been hidden from us that so it's difficult to fully pass this out. It could be that um, the rest of the dead live not again might might not be during the little season. It might be the end of the little season, but it doesn't it doesn't say that. So I'm partial to believe that perhaps, maybe just maybe, me and you, maybe we may have lived once before. You know, and this isn't reincarnation. This isn't endless soul cycles based on your karma. Um, it's it's a single resurrection of your soul to come back one one more time. Uh, perhaps to give us a chance to repent and be born again and to be saved and accept the the gift of eternal life and our chance to be in the new heaven and earth with Jesus. Maybe that's why we're here now. Maybe that's the, the point of it all. Maybe that's maybe this is the chance for people who never even lived and got to meet you know, and know about Jesus prior to his coming. Maybe this is our chance to get to know him. Because we do live in a world where you can know the Gospels. Everybody, pretty much, maybe not, um, um, we're still spreading the Gospel all over the earth, but pretty much everybody here gets a chance to know Jesus, I think. And maybe that's that's the game. You know, you're here until you get a chance to make the choice. I don't know. I can't, I can't, that's, that's wild speculation. And I don't think resurrection is out of the bounds of biblical ide ideas. You know, I think God is allowed to resurrect people <laughs> at his own behest and will for his purposes and means. Um, and that isn't to say every, everyone gets infinite do overs. I'm not saying that. I don't know. You know, I don't think that's the case. I think it's a, I think God will bring you into the world at your appointed time to give you that best opportunity and chance to to know Jesus. Probably something like that, you know, because he's a just and merciful God at the end of the day. And we don't know people's hearts at the end of the day. We, you could argue, well, I've known people live their entire life and never accepted Jesus. Is that then? Are they done for? Well, how many? you don't know how many opportunities were given to them from their perspective for them to accept Christ. You don't know, you know, they may have outright denied him either way. And then there's arguments to be said as well. Well, you know, God leaves nobody behind at the end of the day. He makes sure he saves everybody. You know, Jesus does not leave any sheep behind in his flock. He's the good shepherd, you know, and everyone will be saved in the end. There's that as well. 
and it's a lie of the devil to make you think otherwise. There's, I've heard that, so I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't have the insights and perspectives of God. I really don't. I've got a few ideas and, and speculations based on my best guess, you know, from my very limited abilities and knowledge set as a human being. I don't know. You know, and I don't, I, I'm sorry I don't have satisfying answers to these deep, profound questions. I really am. You know, I, I, I wish I had all the answers, but I, I'd, be a, I'd be a fool to tell you with any authority that I know exactly what's going on here. Um, what does matter, what still and has always mattered and counts is that you believe that Jesus Christ is who he said he was and that he came and died for our sins so that we may have everlasting life. Accept the free gift of salvation from him. Accept it in your hearts. You know, and and that's it. That's all we can do. Um, just that's the only truth we have. That's all we have in this age of constant deception that we seem to be alive in. You know, um, it's tough. It's tough. Um, just, just let every man be a liar. You know, and God be, be let God be the one that tells the truth. Um, and again, I'm not saying. I, even I understand that, you know, people say, well, you know, the Bible is the in inerrant word of God. And I believe the word of God is written on our hearts. I, th I think it's deeper than that. I don't think it's pen on ink on paper that we call the word. You know, I, th I don't think it's a book. I think it's Christ himself is the word of God and his Holy Spirit goes through us and lets us know what that means. And uh, it's and it's convoluted and complicated and, and airy as that sounds to most people. As somebody who's gone through it, it's it's the realest thing I can ever ever explain to you. It's a true spiritual experience, and it and I'm not trying to get all gnostic about this. I'm not one out there to ever say God told me this, and I know for certain because God said to me personally. I've never been that type of person because I don't want to say that. I don't want to get that wrong, you know. And and we're told to test every spirit, and I would never assume uh, through gnosis God has downloaded to me a modern age apostle and or prophet of some kind the ultimate truth that i must spread to other people i think that's a dangerous game when you start believing the voices in your head and what they're telling you <laughs> you know i think there's there's precedents out there to say that there are entities out there willing to tell you anything and they will say they are god if, if you believe them you know you need to be very careful um so i'm never going to be one to say god told me this <laughs> I don't believe that. I'm careful with that, you know, very, very careful with that. Um, but what I will say is my best guess based on what I've researched so far is something like this. I could be wrong. And I think that's the most humble position anyone can take in this situation without without leading people astray. You know, you've got to be careful. And this is the message. I guess this I'm turning this into a message those people out there who constantly tell me, like, well, God told me that this is the truth. Or, oh, I was praying about this topic because I wasn't so sure. But then God made it unequivocally clear to me that this is the great deception and you're an agent of Satan. It's like, oh, did he? God told you that, did he? He personally told you, Janet Smith of Colorado or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you right there god came and spoke to you to give you that divine revelation did he that i'm an evil satanic shill out there to spread a false gospel is that what he said to you like i, I don't know <laughs> maybe he did but um my you know my gut feeling is telling me that did not happen that is not the case here because i know i'm not out there to purposefully spread false doctrines or gospels and i'm not here to intentionally deceive anybody i don't call myself a pastor or a preacher i don't say i have i have a what do you, what do you call it again? My mind's blanking here. You know, a church. <laughs> you know? I don't have a ministry. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm a guy. I'm just I'm just a, a young adult, pre middle aged father and husband who takes photos at weddings and has a YouTube channel who just says his thoughts. That's all I am. You know, don't, don't take don't take me for any more than that. You need to focus on Jesus and nothing else. You know, that's the, he's the only authority on anything spiritual as far, as far as I'm concerned. You know, no guru or pastor or ministry is is, is without fault. You know, and we, we're all corrupt humans. And, and at the end of the day, and it, it's foolish to hang on the words of any man. But you can pray to Jesus and ask him to, to show you the truth. And he will. And it'll be a weird psychedelic spiritual experience. And it'll be told to you, maybe not even with words. But through experiences and and through through 
the word of life, which is the breath of life, which is God himself, you know, through, and you'll be shown things in dreams and through existence and throughout your journey in life, which will prove to you that he is the truth and what he said is true. And, and you will constantly be revealing secrets to you, not in a, well, he told me directly kind of way, but a, a weird kind of <laughs> guiding Holy Spirit type of way. You know, and that's that's kind of what happens, and uh, and you will change when you, you give yourself over to Christ in that way as well. Your lust will go, your desires will change, and you'll be born again, and you'll have life more abundantly. And it's a beautiful thing, really. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a leader of men. <laughs> okay, I'm not a pastor. Um, I don't have a ministry. Yeah, so I went off on one there a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry, guys, I got a bit deep. I think I got a bit, a little bit too deep for for, uh, for my own good. I apologize, uh, but I hope, I hope, I hope you enjoyed these rants. You see, people are sticking around, so they must, they must get something out of what I'm doing here. Let me just check. Did anyone feel brave enough in the Telegram group to say, "Yeah, Paul, I'd love to come on and have a talk today and call in"? Nobody did. Nobody's brave enough to call in today and have a bit of a back and forth and conversation. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, never mind. But if you are in the Telegram group and you're listening to this right now and you want to call in and just share your thoughts and feelings on a few things for 10 minutes or so, five minutes, have a bit of back and forth, just say hi, just share some of the topics you've been thinking about. Let me know in the Telegram. Go to my announcements section on Telegram and say, yeah, Paul, I'd love to come on and have a chat for five minutes and I'll sort it out, okay, <laughs> if anyone at all. But yeah, I'm not going to let any new members just suddenly sign on and do that. Uh, you have to be a known entity. I've got to know who you are in some way, shape or form. I'm not just going to let some random come on and say something absolutely ridiculous, which will blow up the, my entire channel. No chance. <laughs> but if you are interested and I do loosely know who you are in some way, shape or form, just let me know, okay? Um... What's going on here? The language of the heart, dreamlike, exactly. Paul is legit. Well, I'm glad someone thinks I'm legit. That's nice. That's good to know. Um, he makes channels like this show up. Again, I don't know if I'm a God-ordained channel. Um, you know, and I'm very well aware. I, I'll have to give an account for every word I've spoken here. You know, I'm not... And I'm hoping, you know... If I've said anything foolish or stupid in the eyes of God, he'll forgive me and I'm covered by the blood of Christ, I'm hoping, you know. Um, I, I, my intention here is not to lessen anyone's faith in Jesus or, or push them away or anything like that. I'm not trying to spread false doctrines or something. I literally just, I like to think about these things. I think out loud, okay. And again, I always have the caveat of, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a church leader or anything, you know. I'm not an expert either, necessarily. I'm just somebody who, who who spoke out loud and people started listening. And I, I encourage everybody else to speak their thoughts out loud too. Which is why I'm trying to say, you know, come and join me and, and have a chat with me. Uh, you know, get in the Telegram group, have a back and forth. Let's make a community about this, you know. Um, sorry, I, I had another random random offshoot topic I wanted to discuss there for a second, but I've, I've lost it. Anyway, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue into a different topic for a minute, just for a minute, just for a minute, and you'll see by the, the change in imagery what I'm going to be talking about. Let's talk about the clowns, all right? So I've got a... Those who may know me from my original channel, I know a lot of you come over because of this Millennial Kingdom stuff, but I am actually the guy who created the theory where it talked about the Nephilim and how they had clown-like features by our descriptions today and it goes on to a deep history about where we get clowns from where the costume originates from and how it is literally modeled after the rakshasa demons of india and how it's been used in the modern day as a means to channel the nephilim in the same way ancestor spirit worship cultures still do and have done for thousands and hundreds of years. And um, I'm actually writing the book on the subject, The Nephilim Look Like Clowns. Here's a little mock-up picture I created at the start of the whole project a year ago. And um, I'm just going to tell you now, I am almost finished with what I'm doing with the book now, is making two volumes. Okay, and I'll just share with you quickly here. Da -da 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 -da. Let's just share the screen. 
shall we? Let's just share the screen. So first of all, I'll get up my book project go fund me first of all. Uh, so yeah, so here's the GoFundMe page and it, the, the support has been overwhelming as you can see. And this is over the, the course of a year, um, maybe just a bit over a year now just under a year i'm not sure and i've had pre-orders which is a hundred pounds per pre-order and it will get you a free signed copy of the final full finished book once it is done and um, you can be anonymous you can not be anonymous but if you're if you're not anonymous your name will also get a special thank you in the book as well no matter how much you donate you will get a special thank you okay um so after much deliberation, me and my wife have been talking it over and trying to figure out what the best course of action to take is. Um, I have been writing a solid book for a long time here. So I bring up uh, my book project, Google Docs, uh, volume one here. And I've just started writing a preface to this. But you'll realize in the section on the side here, I've got 19 chapters laid out. I'm just finishing, chap well, I'm halfway through chapter 17, talking about the hat man. And then I'll have two more sections to discuss, the sacred clowning cultures, uh, clown societies and D&T jesters. And then that's, that's volume one. And it's called The History. And this lays out the full foundation of, um, you know, the meaning of the name Nephilim, the rise of Cain and his progeny, the fall of the angels and how they decided to merge together to create the Nephilim, how the Nephilim became the kings and rulers, what they would have looked like, the utter corruption that would have been during that time, the flood, all the evidences on every continent for the flood mythos being true, um, how the Nephilim survived the flood, all the theories surrounding this, uh, this idea, the wars that came afterwards and how they were destroyed. And then it goes on to demons, you know, we discussed how the Nephilim became the demons of today. Then section two is all about the clown. And we talk about biblical descriptions of angels, biblical descriptions of the Nephilim, modern encounters with Nephilim-like creatures and their descriptions, white skin, red hair, the origin of the clown throughout history through Greece and Rome. And then we go through the Harlequin roots to the clown's takeover as the demonic character, Joseph Grimaldi, the father of modern clowns. And then we talk about how secret societies got involved with all of this, how Freemasonry and Lucifer and magic are all one, basically. How Charles Dibdin, who created the costume of the clown, was uh, involved with Indian iconography and also created his own magazine called The Devil, said he made his own deal with with the devil which he came immediately famous with afterwards was a freemason member of the lodge number 2429 then we talk about freemasons how they took the idea of a clown rolled with it and added it to circuses copied freemason rituals into the modern circus and then we talk about shriners i have a section on the royal order of the jesters and then we talk about the caricature of a clown the caricature of a clown and how every feature of a clown is a perfect representation of a nephilim creature and then after going through each type of style of clown including expose on jesters at the end there and where we get that from i'm going to talk about the hat man sacred clowning dmt jesters boom volume one done and that's a full book that's about 90 to 100 thousand words once finished um, and i'm going to publish it so there we go that should be the next couple of months hopefully and once i get a bit of proofreading done some final things might take a few months but i'm going to publish volume one very soon um, I do have a mock e-publication here, which I did uh, create, which is going into Kindle. Um, so far, that's 321 references in total. That comes to 173 pages. So I'm just skipping through all these references here to try and get through. The book will look something like this. Um, so quite, you know, quite organized, all reference put together. It's a huge essay. It's, it's a scholarly work, you know, and this is just a rough draft with a few chapters yet to write. And I'm gonna release that, guys, of volume one. That's, it's a lot, it's, it's a thick book, you know, already. 173 pages is a book, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I think it's nice, because it rounds off the history of the thing. Volume two, it's just so you know how this is gonna work. Let's just get my uh, docs back up quickly. Uh, volume two is gonna start with the aesthetics of the clown in traditional, in folk traditions and artwork. And this is where we go into North American tribes, South American, European, Indic regions. Um, we've got the Asian folk traditions, the Australian folk traditions, all showing that they were clown-like costumes when channeling the Nephilim or the spirits of the dead or their ancestor spirits. Then section four, 
will be all the modern day stuff. We'll be talking about clown murderers and perverts like John Wayne Gacy, for, for example. But there are many, 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 many more. Believe me. We'll talk about the 2016 clown sightings, the fear of clowns, the multicolored collective, as I like to call them, the clown in film and TV, the music industry and how the costume of a clown is still used today. Just like all these ancient cultures I'll discuss in these earlier chapters to channel demons for fame, power and fortune. And then a conclusion. And we're talking about how we we can use Jesus to defeat these things in his name, cast them out, and so forth. So that's what section two will be about. It'll be another 200 pages, no doubt. It'll be a huge book, and it'll be dealing with the modern traditions. The folk traditions and the modern influence. So volume one is the histories. Volume two is the more modern day representations. So two volumes, which will work perfectly together, two books there. And once both volumes have been published, there will be a final book published, which is both volumes combined. OK, and that was the original. But it, that's going to take another year to write. It's taking me a year to write volume one. And it's probably going to take me another year to get volume two out. So, you know, I don't want people waiting too long. I do feel like I need to move fast with this and get it published to protect my own intellectual property as well. It's just um, some complications going on behind the scenes. But, um, you know, I've been dealing with legal teams, copyright teams, trademarking things to get the book in order, and get it ready to publish so we can get this sorted. Um, but, yeah, I think it's I think it's ready. You know, and here's some mock up book covers my wife made. Um, that's half of it. <laughs> For some reason, you can't make the full image on uh, this. But that's three parts altogether is one. Um, but the book will be released now just to let people know who have donated for the the book it's up to you how you want to do this i'm going to work with those who have donated a hundred dollars or more either i can send you a signed copy of this volume one which is what you 100 pound gets you a free signed copy of the book once published that's what the offer was now you can either get this book volume one or you can wait a year and i will personally send you a signed copy of both volumes combined into the one book but you can only have one or the other. I can't mail both, okay? It's just the cost will be too astronomical. Um, but if you can, Guy, if you, you want to let me know as we go on, um, I'll make posts on here as well, laying it out and where you can get in touch with me to let me know the details. But if you are one of these £100 donators who gets the free signed copy of the book mailed to them once published, I will need you to let me know. I have a file with your guys' names on it already. You know, I already know who's donated and I'll be contacting you all individually as well as, as much as I can to ask that question. Do you want volume one, the first book, signed and sent to you? Or do you want to wait a year to get the combined volumes signed and sent to you? You can make your choice, okay? It's up to you how you want to do it. I'm giving you the option, all right? Um, and that's it, guys. That's all my announcement is on the book there. If you've been following that... Uh, but it's, yeah, it's been a wild ride. It's been a hell of a time writing this thing. I have learned quite a lot along the way about what it means to write a book as well. It's certainly no simple task, I'll tell you that much. But it's coming along nicely and I'm hoping in the next three months it will be published and done as soon as the uh, all the correct trademarks and all these type of things are finalized by the, by the legal teams behind the scenes and so forth. But, you know, there's all the, all the nuances. And uh, obviously I need to write those final two chapters and just proofread. Um, luckily, you know, you mean you guys won't know this, but, um, volume one, for example, um, I don't think there'll be much proofreading done because I've practically rewritten and reread these pages over and over and over and over and over again anyway. Um, which is why it's been such a long process. I'm very, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I'm a bit of a, I have gone over and over most of the book quite a lot, at least up to like chapter like, uh, 11. I have written and reread perfectly, so I really only need to proofread the uh, the following ten chapters, uh, nine chapters there. So it shouldn't take too long um, to you know formal formalize and work into. And by the way, it will be on Amazon Publishing. I'm publishing through Amazon. I'm going to self publish. If in the future some publishing house wants to wants to make me an offer, um, they can, and I'll take it off Amazon. But right now, I'm, I think self publishing is the best way to go. And uh, KDP, which is Kindle, um, have quite an easy system to get it all done and set up and out there. Um, it's easy for you guys as well. So that's how I'm going to do it. So there's an update on the book. There's a quick update on the book, guys. I'll create the slideshow back on so you can get some examples of modern 
cultures who still celebrate their ancient ancestor spirit worship traditions dressed like clowns to watch while I'm talking. So there you go, guys. Uh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, there's a debate going on. <laughs> I have no idea what the debate's about. Um... Oh, okay, we're debating about the Flat Earth, are we? I see. Okay, never mind. Yeah, guys, keep that out of here, please. There are plenty of channels already discussing that topic ad nauseum. Um, it leads to nothing but just just serious infighting and ridiculousness. Um, but you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know me. I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm up there saying it's definitely not what they told us with the rest of us. But try to keep the chat free from those type of bickering things, please. It's just not the place for it. Um. Paul, I like the way you think, says John. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I'm glad you liked my answer to your question there. Um, have you heard the theory that we humans are the one third of angels that did not protect the Lord's throne? We stayed neutral and now we must comply with our contract here on Earth. Oh, the people are actually angels thing. I've heard it a few times. I don't hold much weight to it personally. Um... So, yeah, someone's been spamming the chat. Um, the comments in the chat gives the impression this channel is low level, just saying. I don't know what that means, Fig. Um, but I don't like the, the attitude behind that, basically calling the people in this chat idiots. Um, that's not really fair. <laughs> that's not nice at all. Um, one more comment like that and I'm just going to ban you myself. That's, uh, that's how it works. Um, £100 of what, says Savishly. <laughs> yeah, I know. Our, our language is funny and silly in England. I get it. Um, he was only adding to his comments. Paul, what do you think about Fortnite? Um, never played it. I'm very well aware of it. I think it's uh, just another obsession for the kids, isn't it? I know they put a lot of symbolism into their stuff. I'm aware of that too. I remember watching uh, J, um, J, J Dreamers um, do a, a show, you know, because obviously he has his, um, his theory about the plasma apocalypse and how it would look with the, the great tree in the middle of the centre of the earth when it happens, you know. Um, and he does show... <laughs> in Fortnite that they literally just represented his entire theory on, in one of the maps which I thought was interesting <laughs> so my wife's trying to make a point about how annoying spamming is yeah okay <laughs> not smug enough though exactly <laughs> Right, guys. Well, I'm sorry the chat's derailed like that, but I'm having a good time just talking still. Anyway, I'm going to ignore the chat and just let it go. Did anybody? Did anybody want to want to call in? Did anyone make any suggestions to call in? Nope. Nobody wants to call in. That's a shame. I was looking forward to a call in show. I'm going to have to change this thumbnail now. I'm going to have to remove the call in aspect of the thumbnail because I don't want. It, I don't. Want it, I don't want it to be misleading. I don't want it to be made a liar, guys, because nobody wants to call in. Look, I put calling show next to Q and A and everything, and nobody wants to call us. That's sad. That's a shame. Maybe next time. Maybe a bit more pre-planning is, is is required. I don't know. Maybe I need to announce that I'm going to do a call-in show in advance. Um. <laughs> Am I still in time or can I go out and play? Says all glory to God. Uh, yeah, you know. Okay, Fig, I understand. Look, I'm not calling anyone out. I'm not saying anybody's doing anything intentionally. Um, just you got to be careful, you know. Um, just because some people disagree with what I'm saying doesn't necessarily mean I understand that they're out there to, to I don't know, besmirch my channel's good name. 
you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I understand people just have different views and I'm quite forgiving. Um, but it's all it is. If, if people start attacking one another, I'm just not going to put up with that. It's just not, it's not a good vibe. It doesn't help people. It doesn't encourage other people to join in with the conversation either. So there is that as well. My mods know this, you know, I've talked to them, I've explained to them the, the, the general rules of engagement with my chat. Um, so if you do end up getting put in a timeout or banned, um, it's usually for a good reason. Okay, it's usually to to stifle too much arguments or creating a negative environment for the chat. You know, and uh, we have a quite a lot of lenience here, at understanding conspiracy when it comes to controlling the chat. You know, um, we I, I'd say we are very long suffering and forgiving and put up with a lot, lot a lot longer than other channels do. Um, but there are limits. I will say that. YouTube search these channels, Mud Flood University, L.A. Marzuli, DTBM, Robert Breaker, God Rules, Zen Garcia, Isaiah Saldivia. I would say I know all of them, but I do not know DTBM, Robert Breaker, or Isaiah. They're the only ones I don't know. Um, so Bitcoin is soaring in value. <laughs> I don't care. I don't have any Bitcoin. Um, this channel called Touching the Afterlife. Never heard of them. Uh, how do you call in, says Abnorm. Well, Abnorm, unfortunately, I don't know who you are. Um, I don't know anything about you. You are the first, the first time I've ever seen you before. Same for Ad B. Look, if you want to call in on this show, you need to be a relatively known entity. Okay, I need to know you a little bit. I need to know something about you. Okay, I don't have a screening process. I don't have a guy behind the scenes who's going to check my calls before they come in to make sure they're not just going to come on and start spouting some racist nonsense, you know, or whatever it is. <laughs> I need to know who you are. So unfortunately, you are not going to be calling in today. But what I would recommend is joining the Telegram group, talking, having a conversation with people, become a part of the community, and then I'll see you in there and I'll get a gist of your character and what you're into and what you want to talk about. And then next time I do a show, let me know in the Telegram. Paul, I'd love to come in and talk, and talk with you this time. Can I please come on? I'd be like, yeah, of course you can, Abnormal. No problem. I've known you for like a month. I know who you are. Come on, bro. Let's go. Come on, let's have a chat. But until then, no chance. <laughs> okay. That's not how it's going to work. Um question says rachel uh, what is expected from us besides not being deceived if we are living after the millennium do we just have to wait for gog and magog i mean what do you what do you want to be expected from you what do you you are you do you think you're expected to save the world are you expected what, what do you what do you think should be expected of you necessarily um i would say just hold fast in the word and try your best to live a good life while you can and by that, I don't mean living a good life is going to save you. No, only only Jesus' sacrifice will save you and accepting the gift of salvation is going to save you. Your works won't save you. But try and at least enjoy the time you have while you have it. God gave you life to live and live it abundantly, not to squander and waste. So do as much as you can with that life while you've got it, you know. Um, within the boundaries, of course, of not sinning all the bloody time and spitting in the face of God, of course. But um, what else can you do? Really, I mean, realistically, yeah, I'm not, you know, we, we can't save the world. And you can't save people either, unfortunately. People have to save themselves. You can't force people to believe stuff. You can't force people to listen to you as preaching the truth. You can't make people believe you. And they have to want to know the truth themselves and seek it out for themselves. Go out and plant some seeds. That's the best you can do, really. Um, but I would say, you know, live, live your life. Don't, don't waste it. Difference between attacking ideas and attacking characters. So is abnormal. I don't know what that's going to mean. Um, we need to be the best human we can. That's really all we can do, says Anne. Yeah, exactly. Um, Archangel Michael, accompanied by Holy Spirit, says, I'll be willing to do an interview with you and share my testimony. Well, you know, I'm coming up to the two-hour mark now, and a testimony can be pretty long, but um, I'm more than willing to uh, hear you out first and see what you have to offer there. If you want to email me at understandingconspiracy 
and just give me the gist of your testimony and what you want to discuss. Maybe we can arrange a future time uh, for you to come on and do that. A future call in show. Maybe I will open up and I'll give you like half an hour or an hour to share. Absolutely, but I think we're running a little bit late right now for, for, for that, unfortunately. Um, but, but Archangel, please consider sending me an email at Understanding Conspiracy. And um, maybe we uh, we can arrange something, okay? Like I said, maybe it might be good to join the Telegram tr uh, too, because uh, that's where I can send you a link to come on and have a chat too. Um, typical English guy says, so if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content with that. Exactly. You know, that's basically what it comes down to. Um, I don't have a Telegram, but enjoy your channels as abnormal. Fair enough. You know, like I said, it, it's not the. Per I know I haven't got the perfect system here. I'm not trying to shut people down who want to call in. It's just I've got to have. I've got to have some level of screening here. I've got to have some level of, of protecting myself from the crazies. You, you must understand, okay? <laughs> um, I'm so happy I just clicked on your live so on point says that. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you appreciate that. Telegram, I'll join you. Yeah, absolutely. So all, all links for the Telegram are in the description to this video, guys. If you're not a member already, come and, come and join the conversation. We'll have a chat, okay? Uh, Danger Angel says, I came across his, across his channel. Thankfully, I've been researching my sleeping dreams. You were helping me with loads of research. I'm grateful. Oh, excellent. Um... The Nag Hammadi Library, what are we talking about here? Uh, are we getting into Gnosticism now? Is that what we're doing? Mud Flood University has all the proof about the dead bodies everywhere. You have the giants. I, know, I understand Mud Fossil University's work. Um, and I understand that you have a playlist, all glory to God, showing all of this, but you really don't have to keep screaming over and over and over in the chat the same points over and over again. You know, why don't you say everything you want to say in like one paragraph or something? <laughs> we don't need to flood the chat with the same things over and over again. I'm just, just a bit of advice, a friendly advice, you know, just throwing it out there. Uh, that might have been what got you into trouble to begin with, to be honest. Uh, but let me just uh, also go over here. Um, just refresh that quickly. Oh, it's like we've had another another pre-order do uh, donation there. That's excellent, uh, Radislaw. Just out of curiosity, uh, Radislaw, for the for the donation there. Um, do you want a signed copy of Volume One, which is about to be published in a few months, or would you want to wait another year or so for both volumes, and I'll send you that one book with both volumes signed instead? What would you prefer? Just letting just to gauge what's going on here. You know, just just let me know in the chat. If you want either the volume one signed in a few months or you'd like to wait a year for both volumes together signed, which one would you prefer? Let me know, please. I'd really be I'd really be interested. Um, sorry, guys, something just glitched on me there. I'm trying to quickly get it back. OK, I think I'm back. There we are. Excellent. Now let me just open the chat quickly, see what's going on. It seems to have slowed down on me and I've lost a lot of things. Let me just... Yes, you do need to be accepted on Telegram. It's not an instant thing. Um... I cannot see you on my Telegram currently to accept you. It might come up in a little bit for me. Um, but I'm not going to take any new people who have just joined to come on straight for the call, guys. Like I said, it's not, that's not how this works. Um, no, nothing personal. Um... First time hearing you. Came here after hearing your channel on KJ Osborne. Says uh, Mike. Said, oh, is KJ talking about me? Um, I've not talked to KJ in years. Um, yeah, KJ's cool. Um, I used to connect with the guy when I when I was doing my thing before I had to take my five year break back in twenty eighteen. And me and KJ were talking every now and then. I went on his rigged reality radio a couple of times. Um, yeah, nice guy. Um, I'm surprised. Is he still going? Is he on? Did he move? I think he moved to a different platform, didn't he? Did he go on to BitChute or Rumble or something, and then 
mainly go on his website. Is that where he hosts his things now? Is 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 KJ mentioning me? That's nice. That's nice to hear. I think he's, I'll have to connect with the guy. I'm have to send him an email, see what he's up to. Uh, but yeah, that's a blast from the past. Thanks for reminding me of KJ Osborne there. Um, Seems obvious Abnorm isn't a crazy, says Fred with a bro. I'm not saying he is necessarily, but I'm saying he's not a known entity to me. And I am Sophia, who's saying, how do you call in? I don't feel like I'm going to get somebody who's calling himself I am with the Gnostic name of Sophia next to it either. I'm not getting into a Gnostic debate with somebody, so I'm likely not going to let him call in either. You know what I mean? I got, I got to, um, I've got, I got to be protect myself in some way. Though I'm saying, bit shoot says typical in this guy, the scariest movie ever. Yeah, I know, I know, I know who KJ is. I know he, he made the document the scariest movie ever, like in like 2009 or something, wasn't it? 2008. That guy's old school. That guy's been around in the game when I started. You know, yeah, I've, I've, I've known KJ for years. Um. KJ does Rumble and also does a live call-in show on YouTube again. Oh, excellent, Milksy. That's brilliant. Yeah, I have, to, I have to hook up with the guy again, get in touch with him, see what's going on. I know he, I know he stopped YouTube for a little bit. Um, Paul, I think you could get a Google phone number to use for your lives. Yeah, I mean, don't forget, I'm in the UK, guys. You're in America. So far, the best way I've found is that I create a group on skype and that gives me a link and then anybody with the link can just click it and join whether you're on your phone or you're in on your laptop um you don't need an account you can just come straight in as a guest and um, that's the best way i've done it so far but it's i'm learning you know i'm always i'm always slapping things together and seeing what's going on um Right, guys. So I think the conversation's coming to a flat end here. I'd, <laughs> I've given some ramblings here and there about some things I've been thinking about. Um, if if you haven't already, guys, as well, just something I want I want to also point out is I do have a patron, and now I'm on I'm on I'm not trying to just shill here right now, but I'm only saying this because I get a lot of people joining my memberships on uh, YouTube, and the membership on YouTube is like two dollars or something. And it gets you a nice little star next to your name when you talk in the chats. It shows that you support the channel. Your name comes up um, on the main channel at the bottom of videos as well. I think it shows up if you remember. But I don't offer anything extra for, for $2 memberships on YouTube. Uh, first of all, YouTube take a third of that. So that means I'm left with like $1.00. 30 or something like that. I don't know. My math is terrible. <laughs> okay, I've left like $1.33 or 36 or something. And then that gets translated into British pounds, and that's only like one pound for me. Um, so I don't offer anything free for memberships. No extra videos, no extra content, nothing like that. Um, but on Patreon, for $5, and I get pretty much all of that, there's no big cut from Patreon when you donate five dollars. Um, they take five percent, so I pretty much get it all. So that's good. But if on Patreon there is extra stuff, okay, for that amount, it's just five dollars. Um, so if you were going to support me and you want access to all these extra little conversations, I have these after-show conversations with the people I get on, these guests I get, you know. Um, here's me talking to Vicky Joy Anderson for another hour after our last show. You can come and join in with that. Check out what we were talking about there. I'm talking to Theron here as well for another hour, like 40 minutes after our last live show. Here's a half an hour with Shelly, you know, talking about um, homeschooling and all sorts of other things. Yeah, with loads of people, there's loads of extra content here, which you may not, which you won't see on my channel. Um, there's some old stuff on here as well, some posts about the book, some extra chapter readings I'm sharing as I go along. Um, early access to things go on there as well. Here's my talk with Gary Wayne. I released it a week before it became public because uh, I had to add images to all the things we talked about. But I gave the raw audio to the patrons before it happened, you know. So there's loads of extra stuff. Uh, my entire Tits for Truthers series, all, all the episodes were on here a month before they became public. Uh, here's an episode I'm not allowed to show on YouTube, for example, that went straight on Patreon. So there is extra stuff. There's always extra stuff going on there. And to get access to this extra stuff, it's $5 a month on Patreon. But if you are going to be throwing just like a couple of quid on YouTube memberships, 
Um, it doesn't get you access to all that extra stuff, guys. Um, it's only fair to my patrons that they, they pay the extra, they get access to that stuff. Um, so I would encourage anybody who is a member, please consider going over to Patreon for, for a few extra dollars instead. And again, I do actually get all the money that way. YouTube doesn't take the huge one third cut from, you know, they, they don't have access to that. Um, in order for me to make it equal to Patreon, just understand this, I would have to charge you $10 to be a member. You know, something like that. I'd have to charge you maybe, what, what like $8 to be a YouTube member just to it to equate to the $5 I get from Patreon. You get what I mean? Because YouTube take a third of whatever you donate on YouTube. So it's kind of, you know, I don't want to charge you $8 to be a member just to get access to the same things you can get for $5 on Patreon. You get what I mean? That would be unfair as well. And it's just, that's all I would say on that, guys. But if you just want to cut, kick back a couple of dollars and you're happy with that and you don't want anything extra, then memberships are probably a good idea for you guys, you know. But again, there's, there, are, there is extra stuff for you. So go check it out. If, and if you are a member of my Patreon and you don't even know this, Go and check out the extra stuff, you know. Go and go and see what's going on there. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm just gonna quickly see what's going in the chat quickly. Uh, da, 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 all good, right? It's like, yeah, it's like it's drifting off. Thanks for the questions today, guys. I hope you've been satisfied with the, some of the answers I've given you. I hope you enjoy some of my random rants. Please go and look at the uh, me and my wife's podcast again. It's not as heavy conspiratorial as this channel. Um, you know, my wife is an open-minded individual who questions many things authority does and has for her entire life, um, but she's not like me in terms of conspiracy, okay? We're, we're a bit, she's not as a... Uh, what was it? She hasn't been looking and swimming in conspiracy for a decade like I have, okay? But she certainly questions narratives all the time, and she asks me questions about things, and I try to explain it, and we've made a podcast out of it, okay? So this is my wife reacting to all the theories surrounding the end of the world that I've picked up over the years, okay? And a lot of these things she's heard of before, a lot of them are new to her, and she naturally has normal human reactions and questions to these theories, and I try my best to answer them, and that's what we talk about in this podcast. So go and check it out if you haven't already. If you've just joined this podcast, you'll know at the start of this, I played 20 minutes from our recent episode, just as a sample, but links are in the description to go and see me and my wife's podcast. Um, go and check it out. It's a bit of fun. It's a bit more lighthearted. It's nothing too serious, all right? So go and check that, that out, guys, if you haven't already. But that's it for me today. Thanks for listening. And as always, God bless. <laughs>